We've been waiting a while, haven't we? MCG Friday night footy. It doesn't get much bigger than that, except when one versus two, and it's St Kilda and Geelong with the rivalry they've had over the last year and a bit as we welcome you to the big game of the MCG on seven on Friday night. Yes, the Saints and Geelong, they played two classics last year, a one-goal game in the middle of the season when we both were unbeaten, and then a grand final, an epic, a match for the ages. We're looking forward to what should be a wonderful game tonight. It's been raining for about three hours. Conditions are going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of stoppages. And during the week, we caught up with the St Kilda Match Committee, and that's what they were talking about. Their stoppages are um, pretty basic but effective. Their hits are pretty predictable. Usually they'll be off the front. They'll be off the, off the defensive hip. Sometimes um, Blake can get a longer one towards the boundary line. They get a bit, bit of variety if Bartell comes third up. Our structure is, um, will give us a chance, OK, if we, if we join in and, and be physical and... First possession will be pretty important as well. Well, Tom, there's St Kilda's plans. Tell us, what would Geelong's theme be? Wet weather, stoppage footy. Yeah, look, I think, Lee, I think it'll be pretty much the same lines. The first possession clearances. We've seen a lot of games where that hasn't translated into wins. Tonight, I think it will. And ironically, in the grand final last year, St Kilda so dominant in that area, but couldn't convert the score on the board. And what about you? A bit nervous being in the old T's roots? It is a little bit. There are a lot of familiar faces around here and the boys in the background, but really excited for a great game tonight. Terrific. Let's go to Tim in the St Kilda roots. Well, Lenny, you would have woken up with a smile on your face this morning. Yeah, I suppose, you know, the, the wet weather conditions suit, you know, certain players and, and certain teams. And I think we, you know, really relish playing in these conditions, almost similar to last year when we played them. It's going to be a hard, contested game of footy, and that's why we like it. Talking about last year, anyone that's played in losing grand final side understands the defeat and the pain that's associated with the defeat. Has that resurfaced this week? Oh, look, we haven't spoken about it as a team, but I, I suppose you know, every, every individual player has probably thought back to the last time we played Geelong, and that was in the grand final. And you know, you obviously don't want to you know, have those feelings again if we're lucky enough to get there at the end of the year. But you know, this is a new season, and, and there's a lot of players that won't be out there tonight that were in the grand final, so it's a different ball game. Is there one thing that you need to do really well against Geelong tonight? I think any time you come up against a really good team, you've got to make the most of your opportunities. And look, they've got some really classy players you know all through their side so we're gonna to have to negate them and when we do go forward and, and get our opportunities we must take them thanks for your time good luck tonight thanks tim tim with lenny hayes johnson the captain of the western bulldogs the bulldogs have played both these teams in the prelim final of the last two years you know them so well they've got a rivalry going haven't they oh without a doubt they're, they're two extremely strong sides and uh, really looking forward to the contest tonight let's have a look at the lineup and uh, well they are so powerful aren't they the, the kaczynski is a big line for him with the conditions so it's going to be interesting to see how he handles that now stephen has come in there's a late Inclusion as well. Number 24, Dempster's come in for Eddie. Yeah, which is, a, which is a big change. I think Dempster will try and provide a bit of run and, and drive, especially off the uh, the half-back line. For me, well, Brendan Gotto plays his 150th, so congratulations to him first up. But for me tonight, I think it's uh, Michael Gardner in the middle. You know, Tom Harley earlier spoke about first possession footy. He needs to give the Saints the, their midfielders first possession uh, footy tonight. They're so combative, but so is their opponent, this skillful, brilliant Geelong team. Oh, they're extremely skillful. Mooney and Scarlett come into the side, which is just, you know, gives them a huge boost. You know, their coach speaks about that they've got the hunger back, but I think the hunger comes from their younger players in the side. You look at Varco, Lonigan, you know, Taylor Hunt, these sort of players that have come, Podsy Ardley, that have come into the side that have just given that spark that's allowed them to uh, to grow as a group even more this year. And Brad, a late change as well. Kelly out, and a bad out for them with Gamble coming in. So the Saints, big challenge. Geelong, the ultimate challenge in footy, no doubt about this, on this massive Friday night. It's a big stage Friday night football. We've got a game day special straight after the final siren. And our very special guest is the Norm Smith medalist, Luke Hodge. Great to be here. We've got Geelong in two weeks, so I'm looking forward to a hard and physical game. We've got both coaches. We've got Luke Hodge, Tom Harley, Brad Johnson, Lee Matthews. Tom's Twitter. Send us in an email. Plenty to talk about. Game day. It's straight after the final siren. Melbourne on this Friday night. There's been so much anticipation. It's one versus two. Ironically, for the fourth time this year. And the last three have been on a Friday night. And the Cats have won their last seven. They've actually won the last 73 of the last 82 games they've played. It's a remarkable run, unparalleled in the history of the VFL stroke AFL for such a stretch of time. Mooney back tonight, played his 200th a couple of weeks back. Had the ankle problem, Ling to lead them out. He'll probably get Dal Sando, I think, Brad. 
Yeah, I think he will get Del Sano tonight. And, uh, you know, Nick Del Sano will have to bring his, bring his A game for sure. Mentally more than anything, he'll work across the ground. His work rate will be good. But mentally, he needs to get over that, uh, that hurdle of that lingual supply tonight. It's only the second time these two teams have actually played a home and away game ever at the MCG. The last time was in 1995. It's remarkable, isn't it, really, when you when you throw stats out like that. But uh, but the, the conditions tonight are huge, especially for the Saints. They need to adapt quickly to uh, to that. Let's go down to Tom Harley. He's got the coach, Bomber Thompson. Bomber, uh, James Kelly out tonight. Ryan Gamble in. Uh, what's wrong with Kel? Uh, he turned up to the to the ground with a uh, bit of a flu so um, he sort of won't we've known about it all day but we're hoping that he would uh, still be able to play and it wasn't feverish but it is and unfortunately he can't make it and every game I can remember against the Saints has been a big focus on Nick Revolt he's obviously not there what sort of matchups are you anticipating in the back half oh well we just uh, Cozzy uh, will probably get a tour Scala will probably end up playing on, on a couple of smalls do a little role that you did for a few years for us and uh, but he's still he can play on tours with small Scala and um, um, yeah just really happy to have him back and you spoke about the momentum, how important that is during the break. Are you happy with the way the boys handled the week off? Yeah, look, they came back on Sunday and they were very alert. They were there early and, um, you know, we trained really well. We've trained well all week. Um, unfortunately, we just a bit of unluckiness with Chappie on Wednesday night or Tuesday night and then tonight with Cal. But that doesn't, um, you know, mean that we're still not a very good chance of winning. Good luck tonight, mate. Cheers. They are a couple of big outs, aren't they? Chapman and Kelly. I mean, there's hardly a better big game player than Chapman. And no. here's Burns, who's been just so good, particularly over the last three or four weeks. Well, with Chapman out, Burns needs to stand up tonight. You, you see there, he's kicked three-plus goals six times this year. But with Chapman out, he just needs to produce again tonight. He can't be one player to be held goalless tonight. Do you think have any advantage here at the MCG? St Kilda has not played here since the grand final. Yeah, that... They do. They do have an advantage, but like I said earlier, it's, it really is about the conditions. Geelong play in these conditions every second week down at uh, Cadinia Park. So they, um, you know, they, they'll handle these conditions no, no worries at all. And, you know, the Saints coming off a, a true track in uh, Etihad Stadium, um, you know, it's going to take a little bit, I think, for them to adapt. And just wonder whether Jay Pod will be as effective tonight. I mean, he's been averaging four contested marks in the in his short career today. They'll be looking just for bash and crash from, uh, from, from Pozziali tonight. He'll just have to make the contest and get it down to Stokes and Burns and, and Varco will be around his feet. Just see the rain. It's been raining for about three to four hours here. It's going to be a lot of surface water. And the Saints have had a pretty tough week again this week. They've had a difficult year, haven't they? Three or four real tough times for them off the ground. They've talked about being focused and taking the challenge on board. Stephen Milne's certainly been in the headlines this week, he's had a very good season. He's been the man that stepped up since the group well, it's been injured. He certainly has. Geelong's focus, uh, as Tom said, has usually been on Rewald. It would have been on Milne this week for sure, and, and they'll be looking to uh, to stop him. I think their midfielders really need to get on the scoreboard tonight to uh, to help them win. Del Sano, Hayes, these sort of players need to really hit the scoreboard tonight to, to allow them to uh, put themselves in a winning position. Let's go down to Lee Matthews with uh, Ross Lyon, the coach. Well, Ross, uh, went with the footy tonight. Did you think about changing any matchups? You've got four real tools. No, we sort of, um, Dawson attempts to come in because they've got the small forwards. So, no, we certainly kept it. You know, we'll work through them. You know, cause a spill and hopefully get some front and square and obviously simplify it a little bit of surge footy. But, you know, other than that, you know, if there's not a lot of pressure, we still want to be able to use the ball, run the ball, switch it. Does it tend to be a crash course in, like, really wet weather footy in the last hour or two before the game? I try not to complicate it too much. You know, I think you can, you know, just some simple things that, you know, no wide entries. Make sure it's kept alive when we put it in there. So, even if they, they spoil it, we want to have a second goal. But if you go wide, we throw it after throwing. So, in defence, long and wide. You don't want to attack them in the air in defence, normally going forward. But in these conditions, you just got to get in long. Oh, certainly, you know, they're a great roll-off team. You'd rather have flatter, lower entries. But at the right time, you're going to have to go in. And, and really, we want to back ourselves in, not be intimidated by how they can roll off. Thanks for your time, mate. Good luck. Thanks, Lou. You feel like it's going to be a low-scoring match, don't you? And you talked about maybe Del Santo will need to kick goals as a midfielder tonight. Yeah, I... I really can't see many more than 10, 11 goals winning this game tonight. Just with the way the conditions are, it's getting a little bit sloppy around the uh, round centre wicket at the minute. So, you know, it's, it's, there's going to be a lot of stoppages. And with that, uh, the side that can just surge it on and maybe get a couple of lucky goals early will uh, use that for a massive advantage as the game goes on. Your yeah, start will be so important here, you think, don't you? So much will rest on it. Big, big stakes. The two top teams over the last year and a half, no doubt about that. A rivalry that goes back a fair way. We're looking forward to this on Friday Night Foot. Wet night at the G, the Saints and the Cats.
never get revenge when you lose a grand final. Trust me, I know. But there are great lessons to be learned from defeat. If you can't give the commitment you gave this year and you don't want to improve, well, you can go. Because we've got unfinished business. The Saints don't need to win tonight to win the flag, but they do have scars that need to heal and fast. Just remember how much this hurts. Bottle it, use it to motivate you. And as for the Cats, they love nothing more than rising to a challenger. This modern-day football rivalry began in round 22, 2003, when, ironically, neither side could make the finals. But both teams had young players on the rise. Ablett can waltz in. Oh, the Cats are away. Fast forward to round 14 last year. Both sides undefeated. The Saints were the real deal. Del Santo, Hayes, Goddard, Montagna, and even the skipper had taken his game to a new level. St Kilda win. Grand final day, 2009. St Kilda and Geelong to fight it out. The grand final made in heaven. A true heavyweight title fight. Courage, skill, grit. An arm wrestle that wouldn't be decided until the final minutes. It's over. Redemption was ours. Vindication has arrived. This is big, really big. This is Friday Night Football. Hey. Good luck, mate. So cool before it's tossed, mate. AFL. <laughs> AFL it is. So like Cameron us. Ling wins the toss and the Cats will kick to the left of screen. Ling and Hayes, we go back to the boundary line. We've seen Tim already here tonight. Gee, Tim, a bit's been happening and it's a big out for the Cats with Kelly out and Gamble in. That's right, uh, Kelly had already been named in the starting 18, so because of that and the fact that it was a late replacement, Gamble now actually has to start on the ground. I would expect that he won't be there for long, they'll take him off and they'll put him on the bench. Uh, Kelly, uh, we saw him leave a moment ago, he thought that he was going to be okay, he wanted to do the warm-up, not fit enough to do that, so he's definitely out. The other thing I can uh, tell you is that it's still raining here at the MC. In fact, it's been raining here for four hours now, and apparently we've had about 10 mil of rain, so it is pretty wet underfoot. Conditions not unlike last year's grand final, and we know how well both sides adapted to those conditions. Thanks, Tim. Lee's rejoined us along with uh, there's, uh, Eric Banner, by the way. I think he's the number one ticket holder for so good after tonight. And, and Tom, just the feeling from the rooms, guys? You spoke to both the coaches. Oh, I think the players are the most relaxed people at the stadium. They always are when they're going into these uh, these big games. But, Tom, was there surface water at Grand Final last year? Was it that wet, do you think? Yeah, there was. It looks from up here, it looks as if there's uh, puddles forming. So, uh, tough conditions for both sides. So, a couple of late withdrawals. We've got a laid out tonight, too. Dennis is...